It's Senators Raphael Warnock and Tim Scott going at it in this hypothetical 2024 presidential matchup. Today on Political Access, we're going to go through all the states and find a winner. And this matchup was again suggested to me in the comments, so we're going to go ahead and do it. So this will be a close battle. Both of these candidates, I think, are fairly establishment. Both of them seem like nice guys and are probably not going to be exciting any new blocks of voters. But let's quickly go through the states and we'll talk more about this at the end. So let's start in Alaska, and that'll be safe for Scott, over 10 points. Hawaii will, of course, be safe for Warnock. Back up to the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, and California will be safe, over 10 points, for Raphael Warnock. Nevada, that's a competitive state, might be trending toward the right, but in this matchup, I don't think it would get over the line. I think Warnock would win it by a lean's margin, probably 1 to 3 points. Idaho and Utah, safe for Tim Scott. Arizona, this is a state that used to be solidly red. Democrats have had success over the last couple of cycles. Tim Scott, I think, is a traditionally safer, more establishment Republican, and he would barely be able to win Arizona by a tilt margin. Montana and Wyoming, safe for Scott. Colorado, that would be just over 10 points, safe for Warnock. New Mexico, that will be likely for Warnock. North Dakota, South Dakota, safe for Scott. Nebraska at large, safe for Scott. The second district, that's the bluer district, that's become tough for the Republicans to be able to compete in, and I see Raphael Warnock winning that by over five points, likely for Warnock. Kansas and Oklahoma, those will still be over ten points, especially Oklahoma, safe for Tim Scott. How about in Texas? This will be likely for Tim Scott, probably mid-single digits. Let's go up to Minnesota. That will be likely for Raphael Warnock, probably mid to high single digits. Iowa will be likely for Tim Scott, mid single digits again. Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana, those will be double digits safe for Tim Scott. How about Wisconsin? This is a competitive state. Could go either way. I thought about it for a little while, and eventually I did settle on a tilt for Raphael Warnock. I just don't see Tim Scott having enough appeal, but it would be close. Illinois, safe for Warnock. Michigan, leans for Warnock. Indiana, safe for Scott. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, all very safe for Tim Scott. How about down in Florida? This state has trended toward the right, that's for sure, but on a presidential level, we don't know exactly how far to the right it'll go. So I'm not ready to say this is just off the table for the Democrats. In this matchup, I have it as about four to five points for Tim Scott, so it's going to be leans for Scott. Let's go up to Georgia. This would be Raphael Warnock's home state. And in this matchup, I have it as the opposite of Florida. Four to five points for Warnock, so leans for Warnock. How about neighboring South Carolina? This would be home for Tim Scott, and he would, of course, win this by over 10 points. Very safe for Tim Scott. How about North Carolina? Well, this, I think, would be leans for Tim Scott, but probably only about one to two, maybe two and a half points. Let's jump up to Ohio, and this state has gone toward the right. I still think it would be over five points for Tim Scott in this matchup. West Virginia, very red state, solid red for Tim Scott. Let's jump over to the northeast corner in Maine at large. This will be likely for Raphael Warnock. The first district, that's very blue. That's safe for Warnock. The second district, it's more Trump friendly. I think Tim Scott would win it, but probably only a point and a half to two and a half points. New Hampshire will be leans for Warnock. Probably again, four to five points. Vermont, New York. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. are all safe for Raphael Warnock. Let's go to Pennsylvania. This will be leans for Raphael Warnock. And finally, the last state is Virginia, and this will be mid to high single digits, likely for Raphael Warnock. And that's the map, and that comes out to 246 electoral votes for Tim Scott, 292 for Raphael Warnock. So Warnock, the Democrat, was able to win this election. It's relatively close, but Warnock with a clean victory. So I think the issue here is Tim Scott not exciting enough of the Trump base, and he's much less controversial than Trump, so he would win back some of the independent suburban swing voters. But Raphael Warnock, I think he would win more of them, but at the same time, Warnock He's not going to fire up any of the progressives. But I think the net result of that would be Tim Scott losing about one to two points in many of these states. And plus, Tim Scott is from a solid red state, South Carolina. That's not really going to help him much. Raphael Warnock is also from the south, neighboring Georgia. That's a purple state, if not a tilt blue state at this point. So that helps him shore up those 16 electoral votes. I see Tim Scott being able to claw back in a place like Arizona. But it's just not enough to put Scott over the hump. Of course, it also depends on the national environment, the running mates, and whichever issues these candidates would be running on. Healthcare and wages, 
those type of popular economic concerns, that's going to help Raphael Warnock. Crime, immigration, plenty of cultural issues that would favor Tim Scott. But I do see Warnock being able to relate just enough to the blue-collar working class voters in the Rust Belt to be able to claim most of those states. And in a state like Texas, that would stay red enough to not be truly competitive. But then again, I don't see Tim Scott really making Virginia or New Hampshire really all that competitive either. So I don't think Scott would be winning this matchup. But this is, of course, just what I think. A lot of things could change some of the margins in some of these states. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of this map? Do you mostly agree with it? Or would you flip a couple of these states? Let me know down below. On your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.